So full disclosure from last week, I picked up three games on Bobby, had a good week, but for the season he's still up two, so it'll be a race to finish. Yeah, it will, uh, we will definitely see how that uh, pans out at the end of the year. So another good game, Seahawks-Eagles, this is a big one. Eagles, you saw, obviously, did not play very well against you guys. No. They're 5-5. Five and five. Seahawks, 8-2. and two. Eagles, the one-and-a-half point favorite here. Public going heavy on Seattle. Overruns are 48 points. Um, how do you see this one playing out? What do you think? I think what I saw on Sunday was the when the Eagles go up against a good defense and you pressure um, Carson Wentz up the middle, and also this is a problem if his offensive tackles, Lane Johnson and uh, Jason Peters, are going to be able to go. I know that Lane Johnson's in concussion protocol, so he's going to be up in the air. we got to see how the rest of the week of practice pans out, but Jason Peters left late in the game with a knee injury, so we got to watch out for that. He's old, too, so that's yeah. not good. I know. He is old. He's been around the block. Uh, I will say that... What I saw from Carson Wentz, it just was not. I was not impressed. He he should be playing so much better, but the offensive line wasn't blocking for him. Uh, when your receivers like Nelson Aguilar, who's our, who has been rated the worst receiver in the National Football <laughs> yep, we League, shared that yesterday. <laughs> um, yeah, dropping passes in the end zone to try to tie a game. It's 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 just not going to work for you. Their, their offense is just not clicking. Hopefully, if they get Alshon Jeffrey back this week, that's a plus. If they get Jordan Howard back, that's a plus. But they also have. Uh, Jay Ajahi on the bench. They didn't use him at all. I don't know why they went. They went with Boston Scott. Hmm. Still don't understand why. I mean, he made some plays, but yeah, it's curious. It was it was very uh, weird. But in terms of Seattle, Seattle's eight and two. You know, they got that big win against the um, 49ers. 49ers. That was a huge win on Monday night. Statement. They are. A good de- I'm going to tell you this. Their defense got better. Their pass rush is tremendous with Ziggy Ansah and Jadavian Clowney. I'm very, I like it. Their secondary is suspect. Not really, not really much. I don't like it that much. It's not the Legion of Boom what we've seen. Uh, I'm going to say Seattle is going to be ready to go. They're going to get this win against the Eagles. This defense of the Eagles played well against Tom Brady. When Tom Brady just had a bad game. It just was the offensive line wasn't blocking for him. But let me tell you. Um, Russell Wilson's going to eat this defense alive. Uh, DK Metcalf, I expect to have a good game. Tyler Lockett, who everyone's wondering if he's going to play. Pete Carroll said that he expects him to play. That's a big plus for fantasy owners. Uh, And then I want to see Josh Gordon get going. You know, he had a few big catches on Monday night. I think he could get well into the offense. We'll see what happens. Uh, Seattle's getting this dub. I'm going to go with 30 to 20. And I'm being nice with 20. Not so fast, brother. Fly, Eagles, fly. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't exactly know why, but I think they're going to get it done. I think the team, you know how I always like to talk about the team that needs the game, the team that can afford to lose the game. I seem like I say this every week, but it's another classic situation going on here. Eagles are 5-5. Five and five. They can't really afford many more losses at this point, and Dallas is um, up by, in the one game in the division, obviously, and they're not going to get a wild card, so... They got to get themselves together. Seahawks are 8 2. They can afford to take a loss here if they got to travel, too. I think the Eagles will figure it out. The Seahawks defense, like you said, is very suspect, but I do worry about the pass rush with those tackles not playing. Even if they're in there, that could be problematic. I think Wentz will figure it out. They're going to have to get creative. Hopefully, Jeffrey plays for their sake. Aguilar's horrible, like you said. I expect Zach Ertz to get going. I said that last week and it didn't happen, but this week I think it does happen. And Jordan Howard is up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen, but I can see Miles Sanders playing well. I think Ajayi will get some touches this week. Maybe they didn't want to rush him. That's all I could think of. That's the only reason I could think of that he wouldn't be out there, said another guy. So, fly, Eagles, fly. 30-27, Eagles, dub. Okay. So, we got two differences to start it off. Now we got the Raiders traveling to the Jets. Hmm. Six and four. Oakland, Jets, three and seven. 46 and a half over under. Raiders three point favorite. And the Jets are fighting for their season still. It's a long shot that they do anything, but all they can do is keep winning and hoping that chaos happens. So let's ride, baby. Let's get another dub this week. I'm going to say this dub gets done 24 21. I think it's a very close game. I think you'll see Darnold continue to build on what he's done. 
way beyond. I'm not going to call for 100 yards rushing until I actually see it. Yeah, I need to see it at this point because I don't know where it is. And he needs to get going. Hopefully it happens. He actually was very upset about all the times he's been drug tested so far. I'm sure you caught wind of that. I did. And he's not too thrilled with that situation. Also, I had a Twitter argument with Ryan Clark about Sam Darnold. You guys can check my Twitter, and he actually did respond to me. Julian Gordy won if anyone's interested in this did happen, but Ryan Clark has been bashing Darnold all year. That's why I'm wearing a jersey right now. Said they should trade him. I'm not having it, and he tried to back off the statements. I'm not here for that. So what do you think about this? About, are you talking about in terms of the statement or are you talking about the game? I'm talking about everything, I guess. Feel free. Um, it's all open. What's the man? What do you think about me and Ryan, Ryan Clark? Uh, yeah, going up against Ryan Clark. Uh, you called him out on something. He answered you. That's pretty crazy. He answered you. Uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty nice to see. Pretty humorous. Both of you bickering back and forth. It's uh, quite, it <laughs> yeah, quite bossy hopping it was, too. It was quite comical. <laughs> but in terms of this game, I'm going with the uh, the Raiders on this one. Wow, we have three differences to start off. Um, so we'll see what's up next week. I think the Raiders are just flying high right now. I okay. think John Gruden's got them going on a pace. I want to see a little bit more from Derek Carr, and I think against this Jets defense, he could take care of it. He just got he cannot turn the ball over, and the one thing is the, the offensive line of the uh, Raiders has to watch out for Jamal Adams rushing the quarterback because he's been tremendous. He's had four sacks this year. Six, brother. Uh, six, excuse me. Four in the recent yeah. weeks, I think. Yeah, four in the recent weeks. He's been very, very good. He's Ever since those uh, trade rumors came up, I feel like he's really stepped up big time and shut everybody up like he like he should. He's, ever since that Dolphins out. He's, he, uh, he's really been playing exceptional, and I – I applaud him for that. Uh, with this game, I think that you're going to see Derek Carr attack this uh, secondary of the Jets. I could see Tyrell Williams having a very, very nice day. Uh, Hunter Renfro, I think, is a sleeper to really yeah. do well in that slot. But he's going to be covered by Brian Poole. Brian Poole is the guy who uh, – he's the nickel corner. One so of a few good corners we uh, have, so – well, with this game, I'm going to go with 27-21 to 21, uh, Raiders. I think that their defense at the end of the game is going to make a statement on Sam Darnold. But Sam Darnold will have a nice game also. Yeah. Here's the thing I'll say. The Jets, this game bodes well for us because they really rely on Josh Jacobs to set the tone running the football. And the Jets have the number one ranked rush defense in the NFL right now. And they hold the teams around 79 yards rushing per game, which is one thing the defense does well. I am concerned about the passing game, and I actually – think that the biggest X factor is Darren Waller because we really struggle covering tight ends. How many times you see a tight end catch a classic post pattern for like 20 yards against the Jets defense? I think I've seen it about 100 times, if not more. It's ridiculous. And he's yeah. very good. And I'm, I'm worried about our coverage on Darren Waller. I really, maybe Marcus May will try to match up on him or Jamal Adams a little bit. But, you know, Adams has been playing that hybrid blitzing role lately, so I don't know how much of that they're going to have going on. Williams has been doing a great job getting pressure the last two weeks. <coughs> We're going to have to see if he keeps that up because you know as well as I do, once you get in Carr's grill, he doesn't respond very well. No, no, it does not. So if the Jets can set the tone, continue to get some pressure with that D-line, Phillips and Fusaki have been outstanding sleepers for this team. And... I'm excited to see what happens, see if we can keep it rolling. But it's going to be a tough challenge, and I think it will also be helped by the fact, you know, my good old-fashioned 1 o'clock West Coast team traveling east. I think it will help us here. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. We'll see I what think happens. it's going to be a very interesting game. So next up, we'll go to the other New York team, Giants and Bears. Oh, this is going to be an ugly one. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah I'm not really fond of this game. Uh, Got to see if Mitch Trubisky plays. He has that injured hip. But we saw this last year when the Giants played the uh, Bears. Trubisky didn't play, and Chase Daniels played. The Giants ended up getting the W. Um, and I'm going to tell you this: I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the Bears on this one, and I hope yeah. they're not going to make me crow on this. But uh, that defense of the Bears, I've been so disappointed with them this year. They they should be so good, and they're not. 
Khalil Mack's not having a good year. I think this is the game where he really gets going. Yeah, I can see it. Whoever plays quarterback, I think they'll they'll do enough to get it done. Uh, they, I mean, if you can't get it done against this Giants defense, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> um, with that being said, I expect Allen Robinson to have a very, very nice day. I expect David Montgomery to keep it going. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think Terry Cohen's get is really starting to get more and more involved in the offense as he should. So uh, I'm going to go with Bears winning 23-14. to 14. All right, yeah, I, I have a similar take on this game. Both football teams going in the wrong direction. Giants are 2-8, and eight, Bears are 4-6. and six. I think I may have said this, but they are a six-point favorite. The over-under is 40. How we go under, I think this will be low scoring. Bears, I could see 20, Giants... 17. I think the Giants will keep it close because the Bears, I don't think, are that good, honestly. Yeah. And the quarterback play has been garbage, if, if, even if it's Mitch or Daniels. Well, I don't know how much of a difference it makes at this point, whichever one it is, honestly. That's how bad Mitch has been. And I think the Giants will stay tough. I think they'll get some points, but they're going to have a hard time scoring a lot. I just think the Bears are home. They, they're still in the hunt, sort of, not really, but kind of. Giants' season's completely over, so I think the Bears will get it done. Yeah, I agree. Then we got Falcons and Bucks, both three and seven football teams. Falcons flying high. Four, well, I say flying high. They went back to back games with three and seven. Four and a half point favorite, 51.5 over under. I would take the over, take the Falcons. Falcons dub this 34. 21, I think. I think they're going to keep rolling. They've been beating up in the division. Bucks are looking hapless again. You know, Jameis Winston's a train wreck. O.J. Howard is complete garbage. So the Falcons' offense and defense have been in click. They've been in sync. And I think they're going to continue to get pressure on the quarterback. I think Winston's going to make a lot of mistakes. I can see a pick six potentially, because why not? Julio, could he get over 100 yards? I'm still waiting for that. I think this could be it. And then Freeman, I don't know what his status is. It doesn't look like he's going to play from what I've heard, I think. Do you know anything? I haven't heard I anything. I saw he was out. It. Like I was checking the roster. It says, just says out. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. And then I think Calvin Ridley had a monster day. I didn't expect to see more of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm. You're not going to get an argument out of me out of this one for the Falcons. I think they win this game. Their defense looks absolutely phenomenal last week. I expect them to do that again this week against Jameis Winston. They're going to light him up. He's going to be under pressure a lot. Ever since they made some coaching changes on the defense, I feel like they've gotten a lot better. You see him, Vic Beasley, get back to his form. Uh, I will say this. I think that Julio Jones is going to eat. That secondary of the uh, Buccaneers is absolutely horrendous. Um, <clears throat> I think that Calvin Ridley is, is just – going to continue his success. Whoever's playing running back, I think they'll be just fine for the Falcons. But I will say this. I will say that Mike Evans and Godwin will make some plays. Hopefully and, Rojo. Um, Rojo, yeah. You never know who's playing running back nowadays back there. So uh, I'm going to go with the uh, Falcons on this one, 30 to 10. Okay, so we're going to go to commercial break right now. When we get back, we're going to talk the rest of the 1 o'clock games, and we're going to lead off with Panthers and Saints. 